Hello everyone, my name is Lucia and most of you know me from Twitter as Triangle Investor and today I'm honored to have a new guest, uh, that's James Sykes from Baseload Energy. Uh, Baseload Energy is an exploration, uranium exploration company with assets in Saskatchewan. James, welcome to my show. Thank you very much, Lucia, and very happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, uh, like with all my guests, I first start with... Uh, background of my guest. Uh, how did you get involved in, in uranium industry and how did you become a baseload CEO? I was kind of born into the uranium industry, to be honest. <laughs> I am from Elliott, Elliott Lake, Ontario, which back in the days, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, Elliott Lake was the preeminent uranium distribution or preeminent uranium mining jurisdiction yes. in Canada. And so when it all closed down, everything went to Saskatchewan. But yeah, my dad was a uranium miner. I grew up in Elliott Lake. Never really knew what nuclear energy was or uranium was until I went to university and started floating around, taking different courses and discovered nuclear technology was pretty awesome. So I, I really got into it then decided to pursue a career or a, a study in geology. Yeah. So upon graduating from that, I started working in the uranium industry because that's what appealed most to me. Again, having that Elliott Lake background, believing in nuclear energy as a viable energy resource. And throughout 15 years of my career, working with companies such as Denison Mines, Hathor Exploration, who had a who were taken out by Rio Tinto. Yeah. Uh, the Next Gen Arrow being part of the, the discovery team there. And yeah, 15 years of exploration success brought my reputation to a group that were looking to launch a uranium company back in 2020. And that became Baseload Energy. We hit it off and we've, you know, we've done really well since then. It's the or group of companies. So Baseload is a happy family member within that, within that little larger group. Uh, what other companies are in that group? Metal Energy, which I'm also CEO, it's a battery metal exploration company. We have a nickel asset in Manitoba, which is phenomenal. Great results. Very undervalued company. Uh, mm -hmm. QC Copper and Gold, who also own about 13% of the outstanding shares of Baseload Energy are owned by QC Copper and Gold. So that's our that's another one of the Orb Group companies. They've got a huge copper gold resource in Quebec past mining project, but they've looked at it in a whole new light and see billions of pounds of, of resource potential there. So uh, great, uh, great company there, Mustango River Resources, who are who have just made a recent gold discovery in the Thunder Bay area. You, know, you can expect some great results out of them as they continue to drill and look Good down the road. And yeah. then same with American Eagle Gold. Again, our, our group of companies has a lot of successful companies. American Eagle Gold are uh, just made a deal with tech i do believe and they have they have funding to continue drilling some of their some of their copper gold assets in bc very encouraging results out of that too uh, some some pretty broad intervals of mineralization so uh, a lot of good things out of work great stuff uh before we dive in the company's project and developments i want to hear your overview of uh current uh, uranium market um, do you think that uranium stocks have reached their bottom and uh or could be more pain ahead? What do you think? I think we've reached our bottom for sure. I, I, I think this is a good plateau area. You know, it's not the true bottom, but it's a, it's a good supportive plateau where I don't think that we will see much, much lower price levels. Spot price has been moving up. Last week, it jumped up $2, two and change. Yes. It was a very good run in the spot market. We're closing in on that $60 a mark again. If we don't see new production start at $60, or I guess like $60 contract prices are higher, then we know those prices are going to have to go up higher. And that's going to weigh on the uranium market. And I think it will be a, a very positive thing for a lot of uranium players. And I think that's that's one of the things that Baseload has really identified ourselves as, as when we came out of the gate, where these was a group looking for a potentially viable mineable deposit and we think that accio is is one of these type of deposits but obviously time will tell the uranium market's hot this is the right time to to invest into uranium this is the right time to have a a project that can advance and hopefully you know hopefully will advance within within a 10-year time frame yeah 
Uh, one other question about the market. Uh, how do you see spot price performing performing for the remainder of the year? And uh, do you think in the short term, uh, Zuri Invest, the new vehicle on the market, could be uh, could have a meaningful impact on the spot price? The latter, I won't really comment on. Uh, but the spot market in general, yes, I, I would like to believe that it will continue to to grow. Uh, from everything that I've read, from everything that I've seen, from everything that I've I've heard from market participants, is that this is looking like a the start of a very good run, a long a run with longevity, and that's a very key difference from what we've seen in the past. But uh, what are we what are we expecting to see? Are we looking for that big dollar sixty per pound? peak that that everyone saw in 2006 2007 i don't think so i think it'll be much more of a gradual climb and hopefully it, it is a little bit more yeah yeah but as the tide rises all boats rise with the tide so i, th I think it's a very lucrative scenario and i think that yes prices will continue to rise i i'm not a fortune teller except for when it comes to finding mineralization <laughs> but uh <laughs> When it when it comes to when it comes to the uranium market, yeah, I I'd like to believe it's going to stay over sixty dollars by the end of the year. Historically, that that period between September October is when a lot of contracts were were being made, being written, and there was typically a lot of market activity within that within those months. So maybe we'll if if, if history repeats itself, and that's the time when things happen. You know, I. So it was just an observation from from decades ago. Yeah. But if, if things stay true, then maybe those months we'll see some more activity. We'll see how things progress and change. And so long as the buildouts keep happening globally, so long as demand is still there, that supply gap will have to start closing down and we need higher prices for that to happen. Yeah, you're right. Okay, uh, James, uh, let's get to your projects. I would like that we go through all of them. Uh, first and most known is uh, Accio, a new high-grade uranium discovery in Athabasca. Um, you recently announced the start of 10,000 meters uh, drill program. Uh, can you share us an update on the progress and the de details regarding the drill targets and plans and what are your expectations from this drilling? It's the the drill program's ongoing. Yes, uh, everything's going well. It's been very efficient, very effective. I guess one of the things, because we know where a lot of mineralization is, because we've modeled it to what we think is is how the mineralization looks in the subsurface, we have been able to provide ourselves with cutoff depths. So we're mm -hmm. not drilling as deep as we are last year. Uh, already looking at the drill holes that we've completed out, we're 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 saving a drill hole in every four drill holes. So we get a bonus drill hole this year because we're, we're drilling shallower. So just another way that we can expedite exploration in this area and make it less costly. So it's, it's very beneficial that way. But yeah, every, everything's going well. We, in this first part of the exploration program, yes. we are focusing on delineating and defining the mineralization, the high-grade mineralization shell that we've identified at Accio already. So we took a shotgun approach to drilling last year, trying to trying to keep a 50-meter spacing uh, between intersection points. And now that we know where there are some areas of higher grade or where we think things can tie in, we're going in there and, and just putting in more drill holes to, to uh, support our theories, to provide more confidence in what we do have and what can be mineralized, because that's obviously, you need to know that information if you're ever going to pull this stuff out of the ground. Of course. So that's that's step one. If a, a part of step one is that there are areas that we do feel comfortable that there are uh, is more mineralization potential. So that is something that we have to investigate as we continue um, as we continue progressing this program. Num phase number two of the program is that we're doing a little bit more exploration outside of ac of outside of known Accio mineralization, and or anywhere between Accio and GMZ. So we're we're looking at a few targets that are within a kilometer radius of Accio, but we're Sorry, also one looking, kilometer. yeah, yeah, within a within a one kilometer radius, and then we're also looking at uh, sandstone mineralization because we we've got a substantial sub basin from yeah. the Athabasca, and it's it's you know it was never known about previously, but we've we with that sandstone being there, we've got unconformity potential. 
our geochemistry is pointing us in a certain direction. Our when we've never drilled the the sub base in, in a particular direction that would be most amenable to unconformity mineralization. So hopefully, fingers across that we do have mineralization in that target area. And the reason it's it's so important is just simply because unconformity mineral mineralization is typically much higher grade than basement hosted mineralization. That's when you when you have the unconformity. This is when you get your twenty percent material. This is when you get your forty percent material. Your five percent, ten percent material. This is yes. where you get your super high grades consistently and can build up build up substantial resources very quickly. So that's what we're that's going to be a big focus of the exploration side of things within the Accio area is just trying to find, trying to find a reason or trying to find, I guess, trying to find the smoke or really trying to find the, the flames of yeah. the potential mineralization system there. And then of course, we're going to end off the season with some wildcat drilling. So wildcat being pretty far reconnaissance, 10 kilometers away from Accio down the South. Uh, we've got a very long, intense structural system that extends for about 15 kilometers to be honest yeah and i i've traced that structure all the way up to macarthur at least i believe it goes up to macarthur river nice. but we're going to put a couple of drill holes into some targets that lie on that structure so if we can identify more mineralization then yeah we're all going to be laughing definitely definitely uh what is the budget for this uh, drilling campaign six million Six million we, we've we've got we've got two thousand we've got two million in flow through so we do have capacity to go over and put in more drill holes and more meters where we see fit, but as it stands now we do have uh, a six million plan for this. We do have other geophysical surveys that we'd like to complete on some of our other projects, mm -hmm. uh, catharsis and shadow, but so we'll we'll see where the extra extra money goes. Um, I'm also hoping that we over budgeted the the six million that our costs will come in significantly less that that will allow us to drill more because obviously it's such an interesting area our targets are all are all amazing and we just want to deliver the the best for our shareholders yeah definitely do you see prices of uh, drilling companies decline no <laughs> no oh. quite the opposite everything's no costs are declining all costs are going up yeah everything goes up that's why we so with the the budget six million dollar budget and we've got ten thousand meters planned means we're budgeting six hundred dollars per meter all in meter. cost yeah, yeah and that's like that's drilling that's helicopter that's camp fuel personnel geochemistry the samples everything that's all in cost so six hundred bucks a meter all in typically and even five years ago I would say that you could run a project like this for at least five hundred million or five hundred dollars a meter all in cost so we've yeah. seen a significant increase in in a lot of services and prices yeah everywhere is the same um, yeah. just to expand a little bit more on this project uh how is the ac accessibility there what is the size of that property and who are your neighbors there the property uh geez how big is that that's yeah. a great question i don't know that off the top of my head i should know that <laughs> it's a fair it's a fairly sized project though it, it it's uh it's not a small chunk. It's not a small parcel of land. It does have a lot of targets to it. And that's just the way we like to operate. We like to have regional trends instead of just small little aerial features. And our neighbors are 92E to the north. They've got the GMZ zone that they discovered prior to us discovering Accio. Uh, yeah. Really, in realis realistically, it is all the same deposit. Uh, ours is just the the shallower mineralization, and theirs is the the deeper part of mineralization. But same stuff. Uh, we've also got yeah, we've also got Can Alaska to the east, and they've got their partner base in uranium, and they're starting to explore in this neck of the woods as well. Very curious and excited to see what they will be pulling out of the ground. So I'll be watching them uh, with you know with a lot of intent and, and interest. And then there is Valor Resources doing a JV with Sky Harbor to the south and southwest of us. And again, they've, they've been pretty active there. They've been following up uh, historic high-grade mineralization hosted in a in a glimmerite with rare earths associated with them, known as the S-Zone. Very exciting stuff, but um, you know, their, their results, uh, you'd have to go read their results for themselves. But it's an interesting area. It's been very active. There is there's a highway 30 kilometers to the actually as as the project lies about 10 kilometers to the east of our project. And then there's another another highway that that services the Key Lake 
Mill and the MacArthur River Hall Road, another 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers to the or 30 kilometers to the west of us. So infrastructure there, power line runs up through the area. It's all hydroelectric power from Manitoba. So that's right. always good stuff. Uh, there's there's cell coverage up in the area. So we've we've gone in and used helicopter support to run all to run our projects at Accio and on the Hook project as as a whole. And it's it has yeah it has added to the cost for sure, but it's we think that is is just it's been the the right move to do. Accessibility in the area has not been the easiest, mm -hmm. and being helicopter support has just allowed us to to leave a very small footprint on the ground, one that we're very happy walking away from, and you can't even tell that you've drilled there. Okay. Uh, let's discuss catharsis. It's a very big land package with 136,000 uh, hectares. Um, yeah. What are you doing there at the moment? And do you have any exploration plan and budget for that uh, project? We're waiting to get results out. We completed the first ever drill program on catharsis this winter. Very happy with what we saw in the core visually, the right rock types, right alteration styles. Uh, we're just waiting to fully assess the chemistry on a number of different fronts and and put everything together. But we think that we think that what we've seen so far is very encouraging for for mineralization to occur on the catharsis project. And that was one of the big wins because well, we are so we're about 100 kilometers south of the Athabasca Basin, and you know a lot of seasoned veterans in the Athabasca would would think that that is too far south for for there to be any potential for uranium mineralization rightfully so you know it's a, it, it there's a lot of support behind that however we see things slightly different and we think that that distance has the potential for basement host mineralization and the drill core results emphasize that mm -hmm. i i think they i think they really support the idea that there is potential for mineralization on catharsis and as you mentioned, Catharsis is not a small project. It's huge. Yeah. It is a yeah. massive project. Yeah. Now, the thing to remember with Catharsis is, though, is that Catharsis is very much like Shadow, but a lot smaller, although it's the larger project. So Shadow, the we staked the Shadow project. That was our first project we ever staked based on a, a macro scale structural model. We took that structural model, shrunk it right down, and that's what became catharsis. So it's the same same style of mineralization that we're looking for at Shadow and Catharsis, just different different scales to to work with. So Catharsis has the entire structural model all within its project boundary, and we think that there's a lot of potential on this. So what's what's in store for us? We do have some other geophysical surveys we need to complete on there. Uh, we've we've covered a lot of the project with geophysical surveys that has highlighted. You know the targets that we're so excited for. There's at least forty drill targets on this project, like that I would consider to be viable drill targets. So it's not a small, it's definitely not a small project. It yeah. is something that could could keep us going for five years of exploration work on our own. And, and that's uh, what, uh, yeah, sorry. yeah. So 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 we've got the geophysics that we that we need to fly. We did drill program. All of that will help keep catharsis in good standing. And there's no immediate plans to go back to catharsis at the moment. We okay. will continue to keep all of our focus on Accio, all of our focus on the Hook project. And when the time is right, we will go back to catharsis for sure. Okay, so there will be no activities in, on the Shadow project also for this year? Unless we can, unless we get our social license, I guess, to to fly a couple of airborne geophysical surveys over the shadow project and that's what we're that's what we're trying to achieve it's just been the, the consultation process has been a little bit uh, slow and more one-sided than than the other but such yeah. is life and we're we're hopeful that we will get our surveys flown and keep the project in good standing but we have no other intention of doing any other work on on shadow as it is but once we have those surveys flown then we'll be in a drill ready state and that's again a couple years down the road maybe okay uh i mean since you're a small company and your focus focus is on accio uh have you considered to find a partner on the uh, other two projects shadow and uh, the other one or spin out uh, or sale of the property we've what considered them yeah, we, we have considered considered that as a as a JV opportunity, as a project generator yes. opportunity. 
However, a shadow is small enough and easy enough that we can explore it. We feel that we can explore it properly within a one to two year time frame. So it's easy for us to get in there, get out. And if, if shadow is as good as we really think it is, then why would we want to share it with anybody? And that goes the same for catharsis. You know, catharsis has a lot of wonderful projects. We could break it up into smaller, smaller parts of, of the well, smaller pieces and play some parts off. But there are some exciting targets that we think really need to be drill assessed. And obviously we want to be the guys to do that. Okay, that's the plan. And I uh, guess, and, and the, that is one of the benefits of Accio is that Accio, drilling off Accio is not that capital intensive. Mm -hmm. We have been able to keep our costs down and we'll be able to define a resource very quickly with by, by with the shallow nature of mineralization. So that's definitely one of the benefits to Athabasca 2.0 strategy that we've had since day one, and it's paying off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you recently closed the final trench of financing, uh, securing full proceeds of 5 million. Um, before we touch on details of this financing and your cash balance, can you tell me, uh, do you see more difficult difficulties in raising money due to a raise, uh, rising interest rates? And uranium stocks declining and maybe some other factors uh, compared like one year ago yeah i would say it's more difficult well maybe even a year ago let's say two years ago it's more difficult than two years ago for yeah. sure uh, when when uranium was hot when when sput was buying uranium off the physical market it was easy it was easy to raise money yeah. everybody was raising money anybody could raise money now it is definitely harder we did raise five million over a prolonged period but we we completed it there's interest in the company we raised we raised 80 percent of that very quickly so there's still interest and there's still a lot of um still a lot of people backing baseload so those the, are not those are not the new investors most of them are the old investors in the company no they're they're they, it's a mix there are new there are old there okay. are yeah repeat investors so it, it's just a broad mix but yeah it, it is more difficult now i think there are some other competing factors so lithium obviously is a highlight commodity right now and there's a lot of investment that's gone into lithium people keep fluctuating from cryptocurrencies left right and center there's just yes. a lot more appetite now than there was or i guess a variety of of commodities that investors can put their money into nowadays than I think there was back in the last uranium cycle. But once uranium starts taking off again, once that momentum is there, I do think that the investment market will come back in. But again, with the with the overarching macroscape that's going on, it's not a it doesn't seem to be a very strong and positive investment market as it is. Yeah. It's uh yeah, not the most bullish market that I've seen, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so what is the, the current uh, cash balance of uh, Baseload and uh, how do you plan to spend that money and for how long uh, this amount will get you through? We've got about $11.5 million in the bank. Seven of that is in flow through, seven, seven and a half million of that is all in flow through dollars. And that's going towards our exploration for Accio this year and also towards exploration or any of the geophysical exploration that we need to get done or or starting up projects next year. So we're we're well funded to see this whole program through this year. Uh, that remains that leaves another about four million in the bank, all hard working capital dollars. So those will keep the lights on for a number of years. Our monthly burn rate when we are not drilling is about 70, 80, 90 grand a month. As soon as we start drilling, though, we we change some of the cost structure around that our our people fall into the the project base. And so our monthly GNA costs kind of come down. So on the on the grand scheme of things, we're to keep the lights on less than a million dollars on an annual basis not quite a bit you just answered so, my next next question <laughs> thank you for that yeah. uh I efficiency often, yeah <laughs> uh, i often ask my guests uh, the next question uh where do you see baseload in five years and uh, what is your goal here i mean is it to bring it to production or development phase or increase the value by exploration and bring the 
uh, properties to resource category and sell it? What's the plan? Well, it's kind of a little bit of A and a little bit of B. It's, okay. you know, it's, it's what's best for our shareholders. It's what's going to be most effective and make everybody happy in the long run. Do we, do we just bring this up to a resource and try to sell it off? Do we try to mine this? I know I prefer the latter, to be honest. I, I like the idea of trying to mine this on our own. It is such a small operation. It's, I think it is quite doable for a, for any company, you know, the, smaller companies don't have the same overhead as larger companies. So I think there are benefits in that, but uh, you know, if, if a larger company, mid-tier company came along and said, you know, we'll offer X, X amount for it. And we, yeah. and everybody's happy and shareholders are all happy with it. Then, then we'll, we'll do what's right by, right by our shareholders and everybody else. But we're not, we're not saying that that is our only approach. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool if we could actually start mining something and start having a generating a revenue for the company that we could sell fund exploration on, on our other projects. Again, you're still looking five, 10 years down the road, yeah. but there's a, yeah, that's as, as a personal, as a personal win, I yeah. would love having that on my resume, you know, finding a deposit and bringing it into production. I think that just speaks volumes of, of what, of what I've done with my career and it would streaks it would provide investors with a lot of security as well that you know not just uh not just just a chump on the on the screen I actually do things <laughs> I hope that this wish comes true really yeah thanks so do I yeah from the bottom of my heart awesome. yeah uh James uh, I would like to hear more about your share structure and skin in the game can you share us a little bit a little details about that yeah, we've got about a uh, hundred million shares outstanding, hundred and three million shares, and that's after this this past raise. Market cap's around forty million dollars, and we've got what was it twenty million twenty million in options, or is it twenty million in warrants? I think we've got twelve million in options. Uh, most of those aren't due until twenty twenty five. That's when they start coming off. I'm sorry, uh, op options, not, not warrants. Yes, options, options, no. And then we've got about 22 million warrants, I do believe, with a quite a number of them are coming off between August and November of this year. And okay. they've got variable strike prices of 48 cents and 70 cents, 70 or 75. So where obviously it'd be nice if we can get that share price much higher for, for people to exercise their, their, option, their warrants. And that's going to be, well, dependent on our marketing campaign that we're that we're initiating a couple of them right now because we are active. It's going to depend on the results drilling, uh, the investors investors' attention if 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 they're interested in the uranium space and you know do they get behind baseload? All of these all of these things add up. Yeah. Uh, how how much shares uh, do you own personally and the management? I've got about three million options. And and I've got about four hundred and thirty thousand shares. Some of those shares were granted upon signing. Some of those shares I I was paid in shares in lieu of cash when I like the first six months that I started working, just because I have a lot of faith in the company and had had a lot of faith in myself. Yeah, uh, obviously it paid off. And I've put about. I don't know the number, direct number off the top of my head. I've got about 80, I purchased about 80,000 shares myself through financing. That includes the original, the original shares plus the warrants to those shares. Okay. Can you tell me more about your team? Stephen Stewart is our chairman. He's the, he's the guy behind the whole ore group. I was one of baseload was his original conception with his colleague, Charles Beaudry, who was also one of our directors. So great guys to work with. Very, very happy to uh, constantly, constantly bounce the ball between them. Steve and I work very well together. Um, yeah, as, as definitely as the chairman of Baseload, he wants to see Baseload move in the right direction. And we jive with a lot of ideas that that we have for for what we want to do with the company. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great situation. On the technical side, we've got Cameron McKay, who is our VP of Exploration Development. Cameron's been around the industry for quite a while. He's got a, a broad um, broad resume 
of experience in different geological uh, geological venues. So he he's definitely uh, he knows his uranium space. He's a very well educated man. Um, he's definitely a far better geologist than I am. That's for sure. Uh, so it's 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 great to have Cameron on on the team and really running the the technical side of things to to get to to ensure that you know we grow our mineralization and we target the best the best targets possible. Okay. And then the rest of our team is just awesome. We've got a very young team. Our field team they. No, they're 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 grunts like the way geos should be, but they're very well loved and very well respected for everything that they do. And uh, great, yeah, I think we're just a very tight knit group of young, hungry people that want to succeed on every step of the way. And that's it's a hard thing to find a group like that, but uh, we've definitely got it, and we're keeping it together. Excellent, James. Uh, one final question: Do you see more M and A uh, in the Athabasca? in the next year in the next year or two maybe yes and no i uh, no on the grand scheme of things no but on the yes side it's not really m a but it's more earnings i see a, because there's a lot of project generators that are that are revolving and and just people are staking up ground they are just staking up ground to say they're in the athabasca and then they're trying to vend it out to partners so I think that there will be a lot of that going on. And we've already seen a lot of it going on, but I think we'll see more. MNA, not until you start seeing some of these deposits really proving themselves. They, who are some takeover candidates? Um ISO Energy has a great project, Hurricane Zone, that's right on right on the right on the chemical project boundary. Yeah. So yes. is that 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 represents a great takeover target for sure. What's going to happen with with baseload and Accio? What's going to happen with ninety two E and GMZ? Um, now, anything anything's up, anything's yeah. up for debate on those. Oh, is anything? Is anybody going to take out take out next gen narrow? Is anybody going to take out Fission PLS? Those are some big. Those are some big things out there. Uh, those are some quite valuable companies. So it's I, I think it'd be hard for hard for some companies to want to come in and just start taking out some some companies rio tried it back with hathor back in 2010 and you know you can see the results they haven't done anything with it since and they actually just sold it off to uec yeah her operator. So, yeah. yeah so there's uh you know you can you can slip on these banana peels if you're not careful yeah definitely uh james how can investors reach out to you and your company a number of ways we're very active Sorry, I want to say very active. We're active on social media, the Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel that people can watch some of our videos. That's the Or Group YouTube channel. I'm available via email, jsykes at orgroup.ca. That's O-R-E-G-R-O-U-P.ca and Sykes, S-Y-K-E-S. And then you can also reach out to the company directly, info at baseload.com. And what's your Maybe. website? Or, oh yeah, website, eh? baseload.com. Yeah. Uh, James, thank you very much for being my guest. I wish you all the luck with uh, Accio Drilling, and I hope we will uh, catch up soon again. All right. Many thanks, Lucien. Thank you.